y'all, this is Marley K. Hope everybody is well. Um, I want to share this story with you. It is really important. It's tied into prepping. It's also tied into city living. And we're going to discuss some of the things that are going to be taking place the closer we get to April, the closer we get to November. So I want you all to make sure you are understanding what is going on. I'm not talking to you about anything that is um, although it's, it's associated with politics, it's really not political. What we are watching is the designed implosion of a nation. It's like the second fall of Rome because America is basically a model of the old Roman Empire and it's falling. It's failing and it's falling. So what we have to understand is that because we are a nation of a lot of weapons, we got a lot of different things going on here. It's not as easy to take down this country as it is some of the other third world countries and some of the other nations that um, don't have weapons or where they have gotten their um, citizens to turn in their weapons. That's one thing that um, these white people in America just are not going to do. So uh, in order to bring this nation down, they're gonna do it from the inside out. And that means that they're gonna cause civil unrest and then there'll be a, a coup. But um, before the civil unrest, what they've already done over the last three years is basically stymied all the different systems. They've made sure the water systems, um, uh, basically the infrastructure is crap. The water infrastructures are terrible. The um, supply chains have broken down. We don't make anything here anymore. Most of the things that we get, you know, including a lot of our food, is imported from other countries. And so those countries have already notified us during the pandemic that they were not going to send us as much food as they originally did through their trade agreements. Add to that this war with Ukraine and Russia and the continent of Africa is rising and they're like, hey, we're, we're not going to export as much and we're going to charge different rates for different nations. And they're, they're, so things are happening. Add to that our um, social unrest and civil unrest and political shenanigans here. And it's just a powder keg waiting to explode. And as things decline in this country, people are going to start acting out and lashing out. And as black people, you know, we are going to be the targets. The other thing I need you to understand, especially if you're new here, I talk about sacrificial cities, these large cities where a lot of African-American black people, foundational black Americans migrated to um, during uh, Jim Crow and after slavery, after the reconstruction era ended. A lot of people migrated north where they have freedoms and have to work as sharecroppers um, or um, indentured servants or whatever you want to call uh, people who were not slaves but still slaves, they didn't have to worry about being hanged and lynched and all the stuff that you had to worry about living down south. So a lot of these large cities all over the country where Black people were established or where Black people lived because they created um, jobs or had ghettos or wherever they they put us um and people could make more money than they did living down south well those cities are about to be destroyed and if you look at chicago and detroit you're looking at atlanta you're looking at um houston um, cleveland ohio um Oakland, California, a, a lot of these large cities where there were once a large majority of black people, uh, black people have either been priced out of the market, we've been, um, the communities have been uh, destroyed due to divestment and intentional city planning where resources were diverted from our communities to other communities so on and so forth. So a lot of black people are still like stuck in the city and add to that, we are not awakened. A lot of black people don't know what's coming. Like this year, they don't know what's coming. They're still living like it's 1999, like it's 2017. No clue about what's coming. And so this story about the Trump 
Trump loving truckers refusing to drive New York to New York City after his three hundred and fifty five million dollar um, fraud ruling. They don't really understand what that means. And um, I can tell you this from personal experience. My dad is a truck driver. He's 70 something years old and he's driven trucks on and off his whole entire life. And he's an independent truck driver. He owns his truck and he has his own company. So he can pick and choose where he wants to drive to. He doesn't, um, what do they call an owner operator? So he doesn't work for a company that has to do business or has to go a certain place. Um, and he has the luxury of choosing where he goes. And a lot of truck drivers now are like that because a lot of the companies that use um, truckers to transport their goods across the country didn't necessarily want the liabilities like this public-private partnership crap. Like corporations have decided that we're going to get out of being responsible for as much as we can be responsible for, we have to be responsible for, and put the onus back on the workers. And so that's what's happened. So with this particular story, um, you're going to find, I wish I could get this ad off of my thing, but anyway. Um, if truckers don't transport goods to the city, the city is going to go crazy. You're not going to be able to find food. You're not going to be able to find basic hygiene products. You're not going to get clothes, your uh, shoes, all the things that you need, you know, even um, international things. If you are from the Caribbean or if you're from another country and you rely on things to be transported to you, truckers could indeed decide not to transport to the city. What are you going to do? Um, it's going to get ugly in these cities and you know all the movies talk about new york being destroyed new york is going down it's if something gonna hit new york um those of you who are believers of the way and you believe in the bible or torah or tanakh you understand that this is mystery babylon and it's going to be utterly destroyed and it's going to be desolate and certain places are going to be hit first because they are um they are part of the uh, reason we're in captivity still and that our captivity has been so harsh. Um, like New York, that's the Wall Street, that's our um, financial capital or financial, the financial district is the financial capital currently of the world. Although it is losing its status, it, for us, it still is. And so, you know, when you talk about um, New York and not going into the city and not um, providing things, it's going to be a madhouse. People are going to be robbing and stealing and doing all sorts of things. So if you live in New York City, I advise you to, or in surrounding areas, not just in New York City, because people who live in the city are going to go outside of the city to get whatever it is that they need. So they're going to be taking up your resources. If you can get out of the city, get out of the city. If you can retire and get out of the city, get out now. If you cannot, make sure you have what you need in your house. You need to have food. You need to have cleaning products. You need medication. Um, you need um, toiletries, anything, clothing, uh, things for if there's a power outage. Be prepared and be proactive. Do not take these types of things lightly because the people who are supporting do, supporting Donald Trump, they are about their life. Like they're ready to blow this mother up in every way, shape, and or form. And they will take it out on us black people. Cause no matter what happens, you know, they're gonna find a way to redirect and come back to us. But we don't have nothing to do with this. So y'all stay out of the politics. That's my advice and I'm sticking to it. I don't care what you think about voting. Voting is not going to solve what's coming. And voting is not going to protect or help or aid Black people. 
This country has a, a policy of benign neglect. If you don't know it by now, if you don't know what benign neglect is, you need to go look it up. They're not going to do nothing for you. You are on your own, especially black people. All of us are on our own, but white people will get together and tear up some stuff. White people have the power and authority to start wars and be in militias and carry weapons and do whatever. They can fight police. They can fight the government. They can go to the state um, nation's capital and tear that up and doodle on somebody's desk and, and nothing happens to them. Like they can just come home and everything good. They just clean up and life goes on. The whole world saw that. And so now we are a weak nation and we are being overtaken. Um, our enemies played the long game, but it's not just our enemies. It's a confederacy against this nation for all the blood that has been shed, all the resources that have been stolen, all the lies that have been told, all the treaties that have been broken. And so what we are living is the final day. We are living the final days of this empire and we are collateral damage. So we have to prepare to survive and endure to the end. We don't know what the end is gonna be like. We don't know what the end is going to look like. We don't even know if we're gonna survive, but we gotta try. And so uh, that's what this channel is all about. It's all about telling the truth. It's all about telling the truth from a different perspective, a black side point of view, and from a um, biblical or Torah point of view. Because at the end of the day, everything that is going on on this earth is about us, the Israelites that are scattered. And it's about time for us to be gathered. It's about time for a lot of things to happen. And the adversary knows this. And so as this empire falls and we transition into this final world government that we've been talking about on this channel, we have to understand that things are getting ready to be rockier than they have ever been for our people. It's going to be very painful because most of us have not lived without safety nets. We haven't lived without a lot of things. And although this stuff is manufactured, it's still going to be painful for us to go through. So I'm sharing this story because I want you to understand when people get to this point and they get fed up and they stop transporting stuff like that means you're not gonna have stuff at your dollar general it means you won't have stuff at your family dollar or your uh you know state chain grocery store it means that your hardware store will be out of supplies it means you may not be able to get baby formula if your child relies on baby formula or even diapers um it means your medication won't come it won't be delivered um, even if it is flown in, it has to be transported some way. Um, paper towels, toilet paper, toiletries, those types of things will not be delivered to the city if these people do what they say they're going to do. So let me read this story to you so that you can get a gist of what I'm talking about. So it says, Trump supporting truckers are saying they are refusing to drive to New York City after the former president was slapped with a $355 million fine in his fraud case last week. A conservative social media influencer and trucker who goes by Chicago Ray posted a video clip in which he says he claims that some of his colleagues are going to stop making deliveries to New York to protest the ruling issued in Manhattan Supreme Court on Friday. I've been on the radio talking to drivers for about the past hour and I've talked to about 10 and they're going to start refusing loads to New York City starting on Monday. That's today, said in the video from inside his truck. He said he's spoken to some drivers that work in work with him who told their boss they won't go to the Big Apple. Truckers have said they will refuse to make deliveries to New York, Chicago, Ray said. I don't know how far across this country, I don't know how far across the country this is or how many truckers are going to start denying loads going to New York City, but I'll tell you what, you fuck around and find out, Ray said. 
The trucker said their bosses ain't going to care if if we deny the loads. We'll just go somewhere else. Do you know? And that and that's true. And I will say that again because that's what my dad does. If it's, He picks and chooses where he wants to go. If he don't want to go up north, he doesn't go up north. He can just run from here to Alabama. Sometimes he may go to Texas. Sometimes he may just go as far as Virginia. Um, he can go to Philly. He can go wherever he wants to go. But he chooses where he wants to go because he's an independent um, truck driver. He's an owner-operator. And if he turns down the load, you know, the company will try to get somebody else to 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 um, carry the load. Now, the dilemma is, you know, a lot of our people, our brothers are out here on the road and they're going to be um, going into these places. And we have to be careful and wise during this time now all money ain't good money i'm gonna say that i'm gonna say that to the end sometimes you gotta leave some money on the table this might be one of those times brothers where if you don't you can stay out of the fray stay out of it i know our people need stuff but you know you never know what setup is going on if you go into the city as a brother because now it's a it's a it's getting ready to turn into a race thing. It's really getting ready to become a civil thing, civil war thing. So if the white men who are Trump supporters are saying, "Hey, we truckers, we ain't going," and then you decide to take those loads, they gonna give y'all a problem. They gonna, they gonna give y'all smoke. Don't nobody have no time for that. And so. This is why I'm talking about being wise. Now, the the downside is the people in the city are going to be impacted heavily. If you know anything about the trucking industry, a lot of these um, drivers are not our friend. I'll just say that. They don't like us. So, you know, you could be putting yourself in danger by just going to New York. So keep that in mind. I'm not telling you what to do, but this is not the time to put yourselves in danger for a few dollars because you got to think about your families. You got to think about yourself. These, these companies don't give a crap about you and this country don't give a crap about you. So I really want y'all to, to, uh, Think about that. So um, it says the trucker said their their bosses ain't gonna care if we deny the loads. We'll just go somewhere else, which is true. Um, and so if they do so, that means people in New York are gonna have less stuff. Do you know how freaking hard it is to get into New York City with one of those mfers? He said, referring to his truck. And, and he's not lying. Nobody I know that drives trucks like going to New York. It is a pain in the butt. Everything about New York. Even in a car, it's a pain in the butt. But in an 18-wheeler, it's a pain in the butt. Nobody likes it. Ray claimed that 95% of truckers support the former president in the ex post. I don't know about that. If you break it down by race, I'm sure that's not true. But hey, let him spew his own facts which has been viewed more than 4.6 million times and received more than 50,000 likes since friday night donald trump while in court in manhattan stephen hirsch for new york post some voiced their support for the boycott online do it let us know how we can help you're not alone in this fight one user wrote we stand with the truckers another wrote manhattan supreme court author n goran ordered that Trump pay $355 million in fines for inflated for inflating his net worth by billions over a decade to receive favorable loans from banks. Chicago Ray said he spoke to a number of truck drivers who told their bosses they wouldn't be going to New York. AP, he, I don't know what this is. He's additionally barred from serving as an officer or director of any company in New York for three years, the judge ruled. Trump, like Chicago Ray, has blasted this case as election interference. 
by his political opponents and predicted other fallout for New York City, as he said at a rally Saturday that other businesses will leave the city after his ruling. So I don't know if that's so, but again, if you live in the city, you need to really be paying attention to what's happening. Pay attention to the supplies on the shelves. Don't play around. If you have extra money, don't be flossing and buying stuff that's superficial. You better get you some beanie weenies and some water. Get you some candles. Get you some things that you can use in the event there's a shortage of food. Um, it, it, stock up on non-perishables as best you can. And other supplies like hygiene products, tissue, um, medicines, things like that. Because those things are going to be necessary in the event that you're locked down in the city you can't if you know things just get bad so it just seems like a lot of stuff is going on in new york with the migrants um with the schools shutting down just a lot of things are going on so pay attention to the, what's going on in the city because new york is just one city but this could happen in other major cities and again the closer we get to April, the closer we get to this movie coming out about the Civil War, I just believe that this is all a part of the implosion for the coup d'etat. Order out of chaos. They got to create the chaos so that they can bring the order, so that you can beg them for a solution, so that they can come help you solve the problems that they created. So with that said, keep prepping, keep praying, keep seeking the most high. Make sure you do what you need to do for your own household. Do not play around. This stuff is going to come quickly. And once it does, it's just going to be a domino effect. So make sure you do what you need to do for your family. This is way beyond politics. And if you're still just thinking about Trump and racism, baby, you're going to be in for a rude awakening. It is so much more than that. You have no friends if you are African-American, if you're in a city, um, even if you're not African-American, you still need to prep. You still need to be praying. You still need to be keeping watch because these people are quickly accelerating their agenda. If you don't know about the agenda, you have to go back to some of the old videos that I've done last year because I laid it all out. Um, we are on our way to a total collapse, and these are the things that have to happen in order for the collapse to be successful so that we can get online to this new world order and this beast infrastructure that's already laid out, ready for us to grab hold of it. All right, y'all, this is Marley Kay, and I'm out.